Hi there, welcome back. Uh, this is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy and coming to you from Recovery Guy Studios. It's uh, good to be with you again today. And if this is uh, your first time with us, uh, welcome. Uh, I hope you find uh, content and insight and tools that will help you as you begin your road to recovery or if you've been on that journey for a while that it will enhance what you're currently uh, doing. Uh, today's um, uh, segment uh, is dedicated to really one of my most important understanding of the program of recovery. And today's segment is called The Power of the Fellowship. Fellowship is critical. It was critical for me uh, in the beginning. And I think the further down the road I go in my journey of recovery, it becomes even more important because just like I need to grow in certain aspects of understanding of my, of my condition, my disease, and how to become well, uh, and the tools that I carry with me to become that person of recovery, that person who can claim that they are happy, joyous, and free, so much of it is grounded in the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. And fellowship is an interesting word. I was looking it up in the, in the dictionary and it said the condition or relation of being a fellow, the fellowship of humankind, uh, companionship, community of interest, communion as being uh, between members of the same organization I think what makes uh, AA and other 12-step programs uh, so powerful, uh, effective, and even important is that fellowship is grounded in their approach to recovery and wellness. You know, even in the Forward to the First Edition, it talks about there are, they are 100 Americans who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. And to show us how they recovered is precisely why they wrote the book. So here it was a hundred men and women who were like you and me, who were suffering, who found no way to escape. And yet there seemed to be something that they found that they could agree on and come together and present as a solution. But it was grounded in fellowship. It was grounded in a companionship. It was grounded in a sense of being united for the common cause of encouraging and helping each other. And they believed in it so strongly that they wrote it for you and me so we too can, can recover. Even in the preamble of Alcoholics Anonymous, I'm so fortunate that when I first came to this program uh, back in February of 1986, um, by the way, I would... I would relapse after 72 days and on April 25th of 1986, I came back to the program and I've been clean and sober ever since. One of the things that brought me back to the program during my time of relapse was I missed the fellowship. I, I had been there long enough and had been to enough meetings that as much as I was trying to recapture that feeling of what I call of being an almost when I was drinking and using, just to forget about the pain of who I was, what I had done, where I had gone, who I had disappointed. I looked at the alcohol and the drugs and, and, and they weren't having the same effect. You know why? Because there was a part of me that missed the people that I had grown to love in Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. And I missed that fellowship so much. I thought, I can't do this anymore. I have to get back to a group of people who care for me. And let me tell you why. In the preamble of Alcoholics Anonymous, it says, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength, and hope with each other that we might solve our common problem and help others recover from alcoholism. Isn't that amazing? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship. And you know what? I've come to believe over the years that as much as alcohol and drugs and the other things I did caused me a problem, I didn't have an alcohol or drug problem. I had a fellowship problem. 
I never belonged anywhere. And I figured that out early on in life. And it wasn't a matter of what people gave or they didn't give, although those were challenges for me as well on an emotional level. It's that I could never process their level of caring regardless of how it was delivered. And consequently, I never belonged. And because of that, I never had any fellowship. And that caused me so much pain that by the time I was 14 years old and I began drinking and using, that, that displaced or at least quieted my moment for the need of fellowship to tell me I was okay right where I was at. And then everything is different today because now I choose the fellowship, that feeling of, of being cared for and the feeling of caring for, that reciprocal relationship of fellowship that for me, I first found in Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, and it has carried through to all areas of life. Now today, I can go fellowship wherever I choose to be. I find fellowship everywhere because I am grounded in fellowship on both sides, on receiving and of course on giving. It's a fellowship of men and women who share, and that's what we do. We share. We share our love with each other. We share our common goal, our common bond, our desire to not only be well for ourselves and to be recovered for ourselves, but just like those first 100 to now go carry that message of fellowship, of recovery to others. Because one thing I found, and it's at the core of everyone's story that I've ever worked with or has worked with me or I've shared with in the different areas, whether it was in a a specific uh, medical treatment center or methadone clinic or or social model recovery other areas I've worked in everything is the same we're just lonely we don't fit we don't belong I so hope that in your time in your 12-step program that you're currently involved I hope that you have found the fellowship that that you create matter of fact let me read this to you on page 164 of the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. It says, still you may say, but I will not have benefit of contact with you who write this book. We cannot be sure. God will determine that. So you must remember that your real reliance is always upon Him. That's important, that your real reliance is always upon Him. He will show you how to create the fellowship you crave. Isn't that powerful? As we draw closer to God in our personal one-on-one -on -one fellowship with our Creator, that power greater than ourself, that higher power, whatever your terminology is, it's allowed for an AA. And that's maybe the most fabulous thing, and that's a whole other video segment. But within our fellowship and our relationship with that power greater than ourself, that power that's doing for me what I could not do for ourselves, He who's pure in conscience and pure in motive and pure in His desire to make sure I'm okay, that I'm well, that I feel good about who I am, where I can go, what I can do, He, that same power, will show me how to create the fellowship I crave. Isn't that amazing? It's a dynamic of the program that I hope you don't miss. And if you feel it, but you haven't been able to express it verbally, I hope this helps you put your finger on it. Because we need fellowship. We need companionship. We need an understanding that others, like you and me, have agreed that we have a way out. And as I begin to wrap up this segment, I actually want to share with you the most important page for me. There, within the first 164 pages of the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, they're fabulous. It is the plan of recovery. Um, I love the doctor's opinion as well. If you haven't read that, read the doctor's opinion. Read the forewords to the editions. You know, right now we have edition four, so first, second, third, and fourth forward. Powerful stuff, and it lets us know how the fellowship has grown to include you and me. But page 17 of the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, chapter 2, there is a solution. 
Again, this is maybe my most favorite page. We of Alcoholics Anonymous know thousands of men and women who were just as hopeless as Bill. Nearly all, listen to this, nearly all, thousands now, nearly all have recovered. They have solved the drink problem. It goes on. We are average Americans. All sections of this country and many of its occupations are represented as well as many political, economic, social, and religious backgrounds. We are a people who normally would not mix. Here we go. But there exists among us a fellowship. I'm going to read that sentence again. There exists among us a fellowship, a friendliness, and an understanding which is indescribably wonderful. We are like the passengers of a great liner, the moment after rescue from shipwreck, when camaraderie, joyousness, and democracy pervade the vessel from steerage to captain's table. Unlike the feeling of the ship's passengers, however, our joy in escape from disaster does not subside as we go our own individual ways. The feeling of having shared in a common peril is one element in the powerful cement which now binds us, but that in itself would have not held us together as we are now joined. The tremendous fact for every one of us is that we have discovered a common solution. We have a way out of which we can absolutely agree and upon which we can join in brotherly and harmonious action. This is the great news this book carries to those who suffer from alcoholism. Isn't that fabulous? My favorite page of the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. It's, it's not surprising to me that it's grounded in the fellowship. I hope you find this to be true for you. If you haven't found the fellowship that you crave yet, would you contact me? Would you let me know? Let's have a conversation. Let's share an email. Let's share a text. Call me on my cell phone. Let me help you find the fellowship that you crave through the God of your understanding. Because I believe once we solve the fellowship problem, the drink and drug problem go away of themselves. My name is Robert. I'm the Recovery Guy. Thank you for joining me today.